Previously, we covered an analysis between the Chinese PL-15 and the French Meteor state-of-the-art air-to-air missiles, going into detail the inner workings of both designs, the unique concepts and how they compare against one another. This time, we will be bringing you another analysis between two more war horses of the People's Republic of China and France, the J-10C single-engine fighter and the must-discuss Rafale twin-engine fighter. I'm your host Blitz Falcon and today we are going to be comparing these two potent platforms. The comparison will be technical in nature as per the analysis done by our aviation experts Horus and Stingray. Getting started with the design and airframe, let's take a look at the single seat J10C specs. First things first, let's get the technical stuff out of the way. It has uncoupled canards, uncoupled flapards, uncoupled horizontal tailed stabilizers. Its front RCS is decreased very much by improving design and bump DSI. What all this means is that its stabilizers give it secure and superb maneuverability at lower speeds, something not seen on other fighters of the same class. It's powered by the Saturn Leolka AL31FN after burning turbofan engine which can provide a good 125 kN thrust on afterburner or the WS-10A which gives 125 to 145 kN of thrust with afterburn. Rafale on the other hand has cabot canards, uncabot flaprons and no horizontal tail stabilizers. Its front RCS is decreased however due to some help from improvements in frontal section design, especially the S-duck intakes. And then its electronic warfare suit also contributes, making it semi-stealth. It's powered by two Senecma MA82 turbofan engines which provide 75 kN per engine with full afterburner. Here for the J10C being lighter and having better thrust to weight ratio results in better engine performance which will also ensure the availability of enough power for onboard electronic components. Rafael, on the other hand, is not bad, but J10C is just too far ahead in this particular domain. Now then, when it comes to performance of both jets, the J10C has a maximum speed of Mach 2.2 and a combat range of 1250 km. It can boast a total payload of around 7500 kg. Rafael, on the other hand, has a max speed of Mach 1.8 at high altitude and Mark 1.1 at low altitude. Its combat range is 1850 km and has a payload capacity of 9500 kg. Being a dual engine aircraft that it is, the Rafale can carry more fuel to boast a longer combat range. It is also good when it comes to maneuverability as it can pull more Gs and has less wing load. On the other hand, the J10C has TVC available and additionally a lot of control surfaces. It can fly higher, faster, roll quicker and also has a better turn rate. If it uses TBC, it will bleed energy however, which can take a while to recover. Therefore, sustaining turn rate of Rafale and its less energy bleed benefits the jet. But during combat maneuvers, they are calculated and everything is taken into account. It will be in the hand of both pilots if it ever comes to a dogfight but the overall edge goes to J10C if a quick shot is to be taken, while for longer run Rafale will be having the upper hand. Coming over to the radar section. The J10C uses KLJ-10 radar derived from the KLJ-5, which is used within the J20. Hence the point is, a 5th generation AL radar is housed within the J10. For context, the KLJ-7A, which is selected for JF-17 Thunder Block 3, has around 1000 DRM modules and its range for 3M2 RCS target is 170 km. However, as per available information, the DRMs within the J10C are 1200 modules. Now the J10B uses GANI based TR but it is unknown what type is used within the C variant. As the engine power in J10C is higher than that of Law 3 Thunder and the DRMs are greater in number as well. We can assume that the, its range is quite longer than that of KLJ-7A. As per avionics, experts of PSF have concluded 
that due to excessive power being provided to the radar, the range is, is assumed to be around 260 to 290 kilometers for three M2 RCS targets. This is also a fact that in C variant, the Chinese have focused on auxiliary power supply to the electrical components of the platform, but what the actual ranges are, only the equipment manufacturers know. The Rafale, on the other hand, houses a RBE-2 AESA radar and it is reported to deliver a greater detection range of more than 200 km for 3M2 RCS targets. Additionally, it has improved reliability and reduced maintenance demands over the preceding radar. A Rafale demonstrator began test flights in 2002 and has totaled 100 flight hours as of December 2011, which is pretty decent. The radar uses about 838 GAAS TR modules, which are better than GA and I based TR modules. It can track 60 targets and engage 8 of them at a time, while the numbers for J and C are unknown. As the radar range is highly dependent upon the power supplied by the engine, Rafale's engines are technically underpowered, although it can supercruise, but the thruster weight ratio tells us that acceleration of J10 is superior than that of Rafale, which is the measure of power generation. Supercruise is affected by the payload too, which should also be kept in mind. Both radars are pretty decent in numerical sense, as well as both having multiple function modes of radar. However, their actual performance will be highly dependent upon the scenario of engagement, electronic warfare and internet networking of jets as they fly in formation assisted by jammers and AVOX in a modern fight is also to be considered. Overall, the edge goes to the j c Next comes avionics and electronic warfare systems. The j c houses three large multifunctional display panels along with a wide HUD display which is apparently same in than that of the J-20. A Chinese joint helmet mounted display is also provided which is claimed to be better than that of the SU-27 sold to the Chinese by Russia. A new single-panel multifunctional display system with a helmet-mounted sight and IRST, which was developed by ABIC for the mainstream fighters of China, was also displayed at Zohak Air Show, so a possible upgrade may be there as the information is classified. The control stick is at the center with HOTAS control which is common within 4th generation aircraft. The radar warning receivers are provided ahead of the canards and at the tail section. The knoppy is also painted by RAM materials to increase the stealth capability. The radar warning receivers are spread on the body for example, above engine, ahead of canards. Overall, it seems that it shares the same electronic warfare suit from the highly celebrated J-20 Dragon. The real capabilities, however, are kept classified, but we may assume it to be a 5th generation electronic warfare suit. It can also carry jamming pods on its two nose-mounted hardpoints and other modern pods. It also features tail-mounted pod, which is for electronic warning or countermeasures. Like the J-10C, Rafale also has a HOTAS control and the three wide multifunctional display system. The Rafale boasts a highly celebrated Spectra electronic warfare suit, which is a very potent system integrated with other avionics and data processing unit which are widespread all over the airframe. It enables the jet to perform missions independently from seat platforms. It can provide excessive countermeasures such as shaft, decoys, etc. for incoming aerial as well as ground-based threats. It also incorporates multifunctional targeting pods which can transmit video live and provide visible as well as infrared imaging. It has a nose-mounted optical sensors pair which helps in passive detection and is immune to jamming. It can carry target designation pods jointly developed by TELS and MBDA on chin hard points. It also features HMD sites developed by ELBIT systems. Overall, the avionics covers the 30% of cost of the Rafale due to their sophistication. As per our assessment, the Spectra is better than any Chinese electronic warfare suit 
though they are yet to be tested and proven in reality. The main concern is engine power management. Due to underpowered engines, it needs to compromise on radar range if it has to deploy onboard jamming system and vice versa. But for J10C, the excessive power is already there, hence more power provides more options, thus maximum capability can be deployed at all times. Now comes our last criteria of comparison, the weapons package. As can be seen, both platforms boast a large variety of weapons for all sorts of operations and situations. I'll give you a while to pause and take a look over them before starting the comparison. Assuming you've done that, we can properly start. Now skipping the discussion over comparison of each missiles, both jets can deploy subsonic anti-ship cruise missiles and have potent BBRM missiles assisted by HMD and IRS team systems. Yet the advantage goes to Rafale due to its Meteor missile which has greater range electronics than the PL-10E of J10C. But PL-10E however can pull greater 60 Gs which are more than 50 Gs of the Meteor and have laser proximity fuse. Hence, when near the target, it cannot be countered by countermeasures such as electronic attack or flares. If you want to know the comparison between the PL-15 and the Meteor, you can check out our previous video. The link is in the description below. Overall, in the domain of payload and armament, the edge goes with the Rafale as it can carry more payload and deploy various types of missiles which have greater ranges. But those on board the J-10 are also neck to neck with Rafale's armaments, so make no mistake, both platforms are highly deadly. In conclusion, both jets are dominating few domains and are neck to neck with each other. Both are quite potent for their roles, and the man behind the machine will be the one to utilize the maximum out of it. In addition, jets never engage one on one. They fly in formation and have to face multiple threats at a time such as AVOX jammers, air defense systems, enemy jets, etc. This comparison is only to discuss the technical aspects of both birds. Hence, in real life scenario, luck will have to play a big factor, as well as skills of each individual pilots. For now, this is all we will cover on the topic. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. This is Blitz Falcon signing off.